So we have uh, computer support. We have we also have uh, cyber security. We have another career path you can take in data science and analytics. We have networks and systems. We have cloud computing, software development, and uh, user experience. Um, normally call it UI, UX, and we also have digital marketing and uh, e-commerce. Right. Uh, so they play a crucial role, and uh, one of the things that uh, they do is to ensure that we have smooth operation of uh, uh, of, of different uh, things within the university that are IT-related. For example, you have projectors, you have computers that need to be connected and whatnot. Uh, we have guys who ensure that we have the sound system and speakers working properly and things like that. Yeah, uh, some of you have issues with the email and whatnot, so they're the ones who sort that. So generally, they ensure that we, if we have applications that uh, the users need, they install and whatnot, right? So basically, they offer technical assistance yeah, to users and also maintain the network, ensure that you get connectivity to the network and the network is good when you're working from home to and you want to access the school resources remotely, the VPN is up and it's working properly. Yeah, they can sometimes fix hardware and software related issues, but then we have some issues that they can't fix. So maybe those ones need to be handled by vendors. So sometimes you hear that, okay, we can't fix this, we need to call the vendor and whatnot. So those are, if the issues are complex beyond uh, their job description, then the vendors come in. Uh, and then another thing maybe to optimize the system, just to ensure that the systems uh, work to the optimum level. That's another thing, including the networks and the operating systems and whatnot. Another thing that they have to take care of is uh, security, because nowadays security is key. So they also have to ensure that uh, um, the, so we have uh, policies in place like password. That's why sometimes you, you get into school and you get that your password is not working all of a sudden being asked to change your password and things like that. That's just one of the things, one of the uh, like password policy plus other policies that uh, might be in place. So they enforce that just to ensure that at the end of the day, uh, the infrastructure is uh, well secured. And of course, we have a number of projects going on. They'll also coordinate those uh, IT-related uh, projects within the institution. So basically, that's what a computer uh, support um, can call engineer or just specialist does in an institution. And then what we call these guys analysts. And we normally break them into like three tiers. So we have like tier one, tier two, and tier three uh, analysts and uh, they play, play a very important role in organization uh, in terms of securing the computer networks, hardware and software, and generally protecting the organization against cyber threats, uh, uh, data breaches, and uh, so on and so forth. Yeah, so they maintain security. So the three analysts I mentioned, uh, so like uh, tier one, this like entry level, yeah so this is like a, an entry level cyber security engineer in most places and then we have the mid level which we can refer to as tier two and then we have tier three which is like an advanced level right um so what does tier one entail most of the times you go to an organization and the job you're given as a security engineer or cyber security engineer is uh, you just sit before big screens and your work is to monitor the activity in the network and report uh, any incident that uh, looks like uh, you know a dangerous one so you report it to can report it to tier two who maybe verifies whether it's a uh, for a true incident that needs attention or it's a false uh, positive something of this also you have this false positive uh, false negative and whatever so you should be able like to know uh, which incident is two, which one is false, and stuff like that. So when you encounter one, you report to tier two, and the tier two can now uh, uh, do some sort of triage to identify whether it's truly an incident or not. And if it's an incident that needs further research to identify what's the intent behind the 
incident, the intrusion, then uh, that that's the work of uh, the tier three engineer who is expected to be quite advanced, be able to do reverse engineering and stuff like that. So it's upon tier tier three to you know uh, dissect the 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 threat. It might be a malware or whatever it is, and uh, be able to tell the intent behind that and whether it's dangerous or not, and even to help in uh, mitigating that. So, yeah, cyber security is wide. Um, so some what, what are some of the key responsibilities? Uh, so one includes monitoring the network. Maybe more, tier one will always be sitting before the screens and stuff. And, and sometimes you can combine tier one and tier two. Yeah, some or even we can have one engineer who is both uh, tier one, tier two, and tier three. So you do you 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 are basically uh, sweeping all the roads. Uh, so so besides monitoring the network, uh, you respond to incidences uh, when they occur. Uh, you also write reports. You're expected to write reports on the incidences that uh, occurred and report those to the management. Another thing is uh, you're expected to know quite a lot in terms of uh, different uh, security related softwares and you should be able to install them and configure them properly within the network uh, troubleshoot them if they have issues and stuff like that just maintaining the software installing and maintaining the softwares uh, security related softwares and then uh, of course identify in uh, always you should be aware of um, the latest vulnerabilities uh, across softwares of that have been reported check your system against those vulnerabilities uh, fix them if you can if if not of course you can escalate it to experts to come and help in fixing and stuff like that you are also in charge of uh, promoting uh, security practices within your organization including uh, policy formulation security policy formulation and enforcement of course educating people of uh, those policies. Sometimes you have policies in an organization and people even don't know about those policies. Like I'm sure most of you, uh, if I ask you what are some of the security related policies within USIU, you have no idea. So, but then that's not your mistake. It is uh, something that uh, uh, the, the security team is supposed to take up and educate you on uh, the policies. Have a session with you once in a while and let you know of the existing policies. Yeah, and of course, uh, the, one of the most difficult, which is uh, researching on uh, threats and also uh, carrying out risk assessment. Yeah, Just, oh, when you're doing risk assessment, basically as a security uh, engineer, what you're doing is, uh, first of all, you identify the assets within the organization and then you have to categorize them, uh, starting with the most important one. Of course, the most important uh, asset is done that needs to be secured uh, uh, needs the highest level of security so more, more more attention is supposed to be given to the most crucial assets within an organization because the organization heavily relies on that to generate uh, revenue so if it is down then that means uh, the organization is going to lose a lot of revenue so you have to really protect that yeah and 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 then we have some assets of course which you can uh, you can survive with if uh, they are attacked you will not lose a lot or you will not even have any loss at all so that's risk assessment generally so this is a whole topic on its own so uh, generally that's uh, what a cyber security uh, engineer does so key responsibilities i think we've talked about that some of the skills that a cyber security engineer might need might uh, include things like understanding of um, cyber, cyber threat landscape. That means you have to be informed uh, day in, day out of uh, the, the current uh, uh, um, issues or emerging issues to do with malware, ransomware, phishing techniques, and so on and so forth. And you should also be uh, technically proficient in a number of things. For example, uh, in uh, different operating systems should be able to work with windows mac linux yeah because when you're attacked they can use any avenue you can use a windows pc linux and and, and some of those tools you also need them to run your uh, security related uh, softwares 
uh, you should be able to understand firewalls, uh, intrusion detection and uh, intrusion prevention systems because those help you to safeguard your uh, network infrastructure. Uh, you should be able to understand VPNs and how to set up and configure VPNs properly, proxies, and uh, yeah, uh, and and of course how to work with the different tools. You, you need to have like your own toolbox of uh, different tools to use when you are doing uh, penetration testing within your organization. I mentioned communication skill, I'm not going to talk about it. You should be able to communicate to not only to fellow engineers, but uh, to clients and uh, to the rest of um, uh, your colleagues within the team. And of course, cybersecurity really needs you to uh, continuously uh, learn each and every day because the, this field changes day and night and it, it's also quite vast. So you can't just say that I acquired a CH certification or whatever, CSP, and I'm good. Things change. Uh, today, the skills that you acquired might be obsolete tomorrow. So you always have to keep on updating. Uh, of course, you have uh, data science and analytics, and uh, okay, so most uh, this role combines technical and analytical and business-oriented responsibilities. So what you needed to do is uh, you given you are supposed to be able to collect data, clean the data, and of course get uh, meaningful uh, insight out of the data. Yeah, so should be able to set up like data pipelines maintain those data pipelines to that that extract data clean data and of course at the end of the day are uh, able to you know uh, run uh, algorithms on on the clean data to get meaningful insight out of it and then you should be able to also communicate the insights in a better way to 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 the, to the stakeholders that is yes um and some of the things that maybe you might need to learn here is uh, model development because you use machine learning to uh, get insight out of the data to do predictions and stuff like that yeah and uh, you should be able to collaborate because uh, it cuts across different departments and whatnot you are collecting data from different uh, uh, departments you, you, you're also supposed to ensure that there is, uh, you're, compli you're compliant to data privacy and data protection and so on and so forth. So basically that's uh, to do with the uh, data analytics. And then we have network systems. Uh, of course, your work, major work is to design the network, to implement it, to maintain it, you know, and also optimize the network infrastructure to ensure that uh, the network works efficiently. So that's for network engineering. There isn't much to say about that. And lately we have uh, cloud computing. And what cloud computing is all about is uh, managing and optimizing cloud-based services. So we, we are shifting most of uh, the things that we did on premise to cloud. Yeah, so in future, I'm, I, can, I can see a scenario where we might not need uh, network engineers to who do the thing you know run cables and you know fix routers and stuff like that but we might have all this infrastructure moved to cloud software uh, managing uh, servers and whatnot we just have everything on cloud so we need this uh, it's a field that people are getting in uh, now and it's growing rapidly so and we have so many cloud-based services by the way all the way from uh, networks to software uh, related services, hosting and whatnot. Yeah, machine learning. So there's a lot on cloud. Uh, software development, most of you are familiar with this. So we, we, we have software development, you can say we, we have backend engineers, frontend engineers. Uh, some of the frontend engineers will basically work with the UI, UX design. And uh, with the backend engineers, of course, they will focus on developing APIs and basically the logic of how the application uh, saves data, retrieves data, who is able to access that data, who is not supposed to access the data, and so on and so forth. Yeah. And lastly, we have digital marketing because it told me I have two minutes, so I have to rush through everything. So with the digital marketing and e-commerce, uh, this role uh, entails uh, strategic planning, creative execution, and uh, analytical insights uh, just to promote the product and service online. 
media so you can use social media sites and whatnot to promote the product uh so basically that is it and uh, so uh, so if if i may just like uh, give you a conclusion is sometimes it is good to start with uh, a role that is more general especially if you are not yet decided on what exactly you want to specialize in so for example if you're doing software development start with something that exposes you to both front end development back end so be like a sort of uh, uh, full stack developer and then later on you will realize that okay maybe i'm not so good with the uh, with, with the you know tweaking and uh, designing front end my color choice i'm really struggling there but when it comes to back end it's uh, you know uh, i do things flawlessly so i'd rather be a back end engineer of some sort so you, it it's uh, it's something you you have to try first before you you really uh, decide even with networks cannot just say i'm not good at networks but you can try it first and see if uh, you might find that uh, you are good at uh, you, you 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 fall in love with the um, cloud co computing and not necessarily the traditional uh, network uh, uh, network engineering where you design and implement network on premise but you like anything to do with cloud but then you also need the skills that uh, uh, the uh, network engineers on premise have or need you know because those skills are transferable to a cloud-based environment uh, 